guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I think I just want to do just casual chit chat, get ready with me. I'll link all the items that I'm using throughout the video in the description bar in case you guys are curious, in case I don't get to like point it out and say which ones I'm using, but just real casual get ready with me. The plan is to film like basically chit chat, get ready with me in preparation to film another video um, where I'm not actually going to be doing the makeup, but I'm not sure if that's actually going to happen because it's almost like 9 o'clock at night right now on a Tuesday um, and my bedtime has gone up oh. <laughs> so if anything maybe we'll take a picture for the gram so we can update something there because I kind of been slacking on my Instagram game but in general maybe it'll just be a you know life update here and there I know I like watching these videos um, just to kind of you know get a little background on somebody just get to know what they're up to maybe I'll call this chit chat chismosa time or something because I know I'm chismosa and that's why I like these videos to see what's going on in other people's lives you're probably chismosa too maybe that's why you click on this video aren't we all you know a little bit creepy want to know about people we don't know <laughs> I'll admit I do it I do it um I'm a little bit creepy and you know sometimes you end up in one person's page and then you end up on their like brothers, friends, cousins, boyfriends, or whatever. Yeah, I'm creepy. I'd be creepy. Raise, raise your hand, let me know in the comments if you're a little bit creepy like that too. Sometimes you get carried away with your creeping. But, um, just casual, maybe try to bring out some products I haven't used in a while. These are always challenging for like videos that I'm not doing a tutorial for. Uh, it's which eyeshadow palette to use, kind of mix it up, show them some love. But I'm going to start off with my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot and just I'm lazy, so with my fingers, I'm just gonna add that in. Um, but basically, just a little update. So I've, in case you're wondering, like, why do you only have two videos a week? Why do you only have one video a week? Why is there no videos this week? <laughs> so I recently got a new job. So I've just been kind of trying to balance my new routes, my new routine with that in general. <laughs> so sometimes I'm like, oh my god, I wasn't able to get a video up. Or just in general, I feel like my February, February, my September is flying by. It's crazy. I'm like, my September's packed. I forgot someone was like, oh, do you have these days for you? I was like, I have a really packed September. But um, I guess maybe just talking to you guys a little bit about maybe like the interview process, getting a new job. I know, you know, a lot of people are familiar with that process. Maybe some people aren't. But my biggest thing is... For me, it was kind of doing like a career change. Um, so I'm going to take out the Mario Master Palette. And the biggest thing was for me, it was, I kind of want to talk about, I guess maybe like going through like a mini depression, I feel like, because I feel like I was doing something I really didn't enjoy, I really didn't want to do. Um, and I feel like that was really taking a toll on me. So I was like, you know what? We need to make a change here. And for the longest, I feel like I wanted to make a change. I just didn't know what I wanted to make a change into to transition to, you know? So I've been out of college for four years now. And since I graduated college, so I'm a communication and sociology major. I went to the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Great school. <laughs> Um, but with that communication sociology, I feel like you can kind of do so much and I was like, I'm not sure what I want to do, but I mean, hey, this kind of opens up a lot of paths for me, you know, that I can kind of use with my degree. So one of the things I went into straight after college was human resources. And I was like, you know what, let's try it out. <laughs> let's see, you know, what happens here. Um, and you know what, we got to pay student loans. So you figure out what you want to do later, right? Because those are coming in. As soon as you graduate, you get that lovely letter where they're like, hey, congratulations, you're going to have to start paying us in six months. So that's always great. So I was doing human resources for four years. <laughs> And honestly, human resources, I feel like it just wasn't for me. It's for certain people. Some people really enjoy it. I personally just, it's not, you know, I didn't get up every morning thinking, oh my God, we're going to do HR, benefit, paperwork, oh my God, hiring, termination, you know. For me, it was just a little bit too mundane. It definitely, just after a while, I was like, you know, this is not what I wanted to do. But I feel like, you know, people would ask me like, oh my God, did you get a new job then? Are you looking? Are you looking? Are you, what are you doing? Like, same thing. Still doing the same thing. Still doing the same thing. Because I didn't know what I wanted to do. So that's why I kind of feel like maybe I was there for four years or so. But after a while, just like, 
it got harder and harder to like kind of want to get out of bed and get to work because I was just dreading kind of what I was doing. I wasn't enjoying it. Um, and honestly, I do feel like I kind of went through a depression. I didn't realize it. Um, I feel like until maybe like the very end or like maybe I was kind of denying it or I just didn't pinpoint what was kind of depressing me. And I feel like with the depression, like I was just noticing things. I was like, wow, like why can't I lose weight? Why do I keep gaining weight? Like sometimes it was just like I really couldn't like get out of bed like I was just like I have so much to do or like I gotta film I gotta do this and then I was just like I don't want to get out of bed you know I was like I have the whole day free to myself what do I do I was like I want to do absolutely nothing and it was hard because sometimes I would realize it and I'd try to snap myself out of it but the fact that you can't snap yourself out of it you know so for me I was like oh my god like we need to make a change um and I feel like for you know those of you who might be in that situation like something that really helped me is like just kind of make goals for yourself for the year and for me a big goal was like get another job <laughs> you know find something else um either figure out what you want to do i feel like 2016 i had that goal get another job but i feel like 2016 was more of figure out that what you want to do and then tell yourself realize this is really not what you want to do so 2017 i finally made it my goal like no get a new job and i had always kind of you know been looking throughout the last four years but i feel like until this very last year i don't know i, I finally was just like no we're gonna do it this is gonna happen <laughs> and yeah so i finally was just just on it all day every day I was just either you can you know go about telling friends you know so maybe they'll hear something either in their job maybe if you have a friend who's in that industry that you're in um, you know so that's one way use your networking um, the other way was I was just living on job boards I was living on indeed.com I was living on monster.com I was looking on LinkedIn every single day um, but the biggest thing was I wanted to kind of not do what I was doing, but I also didn't want to just take anything, you know, because I didn't want to be back in that situation again where you're not doing what you want. Like, I definitely, like, there's some jobs that I had heard back from. Like, I was, I would send in my application and then they're like, oh my God, you sound so great. Like, you should totally, like, you know, talk to us. And so, phone interview. But then that company, they're like, okay, um, we're going to set up a phone interview for three o'clock. And I was like, okay. Never called. What the hell? Emailed them. Didn't hear anything. Somebody else reached out to me. Oh, hey, uh, we're going to set up a phone review at this time. Okay, awesome. Do it. <laughs> Never heard back. And then finally, you know, I was like, hey, did you uh, need to reschedule? Because I never heard back from you. They're like, oh my god, yeah, we'll call you like right now. I was like, okay. <laughs> and right like five minutes into talking to them you know telling a little bit about myself like oh my god you sound so great would you want to come in for an in-person interview i was like i'm getting way too many red flags the fact that you guys are so disorganized and then just after hearing about me for like five minutes or so oh uh, you think i'm amazing like what the hell so that job i ended up being like you know what no, no thanks um and then later i was actually kind of glad because i kept seeing them reposting that job <laughs> and changing up the description changing up the title you know i was like nobody is taking this so okay i'm glad like i definitely saw something that i wasn't comfortable like there was just something going on sketch there and i just didn't feel right i was like i'm trying to convince myself to go take this job where there's no reasons no positive reasons to do it so that's the first thing definitely make sure if you're going to find another job, try to find something that you really feel right about. There's definitely more positives than there are negatives. So that was definitely, I'm glad I didn't take that job because I feel like I would have been still depressed. I would have been like, what the hell? Um, so definitely I just kept kind of going through the job search and keep living on job boards. And finally, I definitely, I feel like I found something. Um, went through the interview process and the interview process finding a job it can take anywhere from like a month to more uh, depending on just finding the right thing that you want to do and then actually going through the process so once you submit your resume and especially with like job boards and stuff you know how many people are some hundreds of people are submitting their resumes <laughs> for the same job you are so the hardest part is how do I stand out 
And I was like, oh my God, how am I going to get through this? Because my biggest thing is I'm not only looking for another job, I'm trying to transition and change it to a whole nother career. So I'm trying to go from human resources to finance. I'm like, you know what? I really like marketing. I've done some marketing work and I really enjoyed that. And I really want to transition into that. So then comes the rejections. <laughs> it's like, sorry, but we went with someone more qualified. Sorry, we went with someone more qualified. I got that a lot, definitely. You know, where they went with someone who actually has the background, who went to school, who has a degree. I'm just like, ugh. So, you know, just being creative with what you put on your resume. I'm doing human resources. It's probably what they say, like, why is this chick even, you know, like, submitting their resume? But what actually did help me was, you know, putting my YouTube on my resume. You know, getting creative. Um, and I feel like that really kind of helped me stand out or kind of really helped me, you know, in my marketing resume. So P.S. I'm um, just real simple. I used Isabel and then I went in with a little bit of Violetta in the corners and now I'm going in with Fifth Avenue on the lids. Um, but I was really shocked and so I was like, you know what, some resumes I was like, should I put the YouTube shit on that? But any marketing I was like, you know what, at this point, what do you got to lose? Because <laughs> what else do you have to work with? So let's put it on there. Let's pray to the gods. Let's pray that we get there. Um, and there was one job. I feel like there's definitely a lot of those jobs where like, oh, we want someone more qualified who has the background. Those didn't kill me. There's one job that I didn't get that, oh, that killed me. I mean, let me know if you guys have ever had that one job that you really, really wanted and you didn't get it. Like, of course, when you really want it and you get it, it's amazing. But when you don't get it, God, that's just like a nice punch in the stomach. Just like that, like, deteriorates you a lot. I feel like... Getting that, because I, I got through where they looked at my resume, I was like, oh my god, they looked at my resume. Okay, okay, now we're going to give them like a week or two so they can look through everybody's and maybe next next phase. And then I got to the next phase where they're like, okay, we're going to do a phone call. I'm like, oh my god, okay, okay, let's do a phone call. And the phone call, for me, for coming as HR, I kind of know like, you know, what are standard questions, just to kind of fill you out. Make sure, you know, either you are the right person and or you're not crazy, you know, kind of fill you out. And then there's usually maybe like another phase or two where they actually meet you in person, maybe different people from different apartments on a different day or all in one day. So I was like, okay, we got to the phone call. All right, now let's give it like another week or two. So about a month in between what's the next phase. I wasn't hearing back. I wasn't hearing back. And then I can't remember if that job actually, because I was like, I kind of was like, can I, should I, I really want this, should I email them? Like, hey, do you need anything else from me? Or, you know, how do you know to take that next step, that next approach? Um, I can't remember. No, they never emailed me back. Because some places are pretty good about emailing back. Like, hey, sorry, you suck. We're not going to hire you, you know. We want someone better. Which some places, they did that. And I really appreciate it. Especially if you're interviewing. Don't you appreciate that so you're not kind of like hung up on that one place? Because this one place that I really wanted the job where I made it to the phone call. And then I was like, I wasn't here. I was like, where did I lose you? These are like standard questions. Like, what what did I say? What did you not like? Like, what the heck? How did I not get the, like, maybe in-person or the telecommuting interview? Because they were, like, reaching out to me from, like, California. So I was like, how did I lose you? <laughs> um, but I didn't hear back. And then I was like, you know what? It's been, like, a month. I think it was, like, two months. And I had, it like, a month and then two months. <laughs> I'm like, maybe, maybe. I was like, yeah, we definitely lost that one, but that one killed me. And I was kind of, like I said, I'm a little creepy. It's like, I want to know who got this position. What well, bitch got this position? <laughs> who did they hire? Um, like, I, I want to know. And I would decide to like check on LinkedIn. <laughs> I wanted to see if they like that position would, you know, now have that person on there. And, you know, every once in a while I would look and finally I saw and then kind of stalked her. <laughs> I kind of found out, you know, who had the position. I was like, oh, yeah, they gave it, you know, put the put the face to it. I was like, oh, they gave it to this chick. So that, I feel like that kind of was definitely like maybe like a mini breakdown for me where it was like I kind of had to pick myself up from it. And like, because that's just like, damn, like you really just, you just take that to heart a little bit. It's hard not to. You're not supposed to, but I definitely kind of did. So I feel like that was kind of like a, like a roadblock for me almost. Um, but that's, that's what comes with this process. And the hardest part is kind of getting past it. The other ones, I'm just like, all right, cool. Like I get it. You know, like you're definitely going to go with someone who has a degree, but this one, when you get to a certain phase and then you don't, you know, kind of go on and it's something you really want that, that hurts, that hurts. 
my biggest my biggest thing for me I just feel like is that really just kind of put a halt on everything for me for a while that kind of just kind of rolled me back into my depression a little bit <laughs> but the part of me that was really just telling myself don't go back into it don't like really trying to fight it I feel like for me at that point and tell me if this has happened to you too I feel like it's it's maybe just a mental game um, I'm using the Too Faced Hangover RX it's just like I don't know, to me it felt like a mental game at that point and really trying to psych myself out and really trying to pump myself up to like, yes, I can do it, you know, yes, um, you know, like you're gonna find it, it's gonna happen, <laughs> you know, motivate, motivating yourself. Actually, one thing that I did do, and I feel like there's like, I love reading like books, different types of books. For me, sometimes the books that I need, I think are those motivational, like inspirational books and they can come in different ways. I feel like they can be like just straight on, like, you know, motivational books you'll find in the motivational self-help section. Um, actually, no, I, before this, I had never ever bought a book like that. But for me, motivational books were like, yeah, for me, motivational books were books like Girl Boss, real like just seeing like women, like hard working women in action and just, you know, bad bitch type books, you know, the real pump is like, yeah, I can do that. I can be her. Um, or even stories from like, who is a Tina Fey story? Like her book was so good. It's like, wow, like kind of seeing her journey, how she came up and just like, uh, Mindy, Mindy Colling also, it, it was comedians. They're not like real from the self-help book, but like just hearing their stories, motivating yourself and just kind of rem reminding yourself like, hey, they did it. Your path's gonna be different. You can figure out, or you're gonna get there maybe, hopefully. So those are the types of like motivational books. So every once in a while, I'll try to like bring in one of those in. But um, one that I actually did read is You Are a Badass <laughs> by Jen Sincero. Um, I'll link the book down below, but I actually bought the book. But for me, sometimes I was like, I'm driving to work or like just in my Uber. And sometimes reading it was just like a little bit harder. Um, so for me, what I ended up getting was like a free trial from like the Audible or the audiobooks. Um, I'm going to use these two foundations, my favorites. Um, and then just honestly, just reading and just listening to that. So instead of music, I would just listen to that because it's like, I'm going to do it anyway because I would get sometimes distracted with books. So I would definitely say check out like audiobooks. Um, and then what I would do during my lunch breaks, I was just like, because I was working like through my lunch breaks before because I was just so busy at work and I was miserable because I was like, busy doing what I wasn't liking. So I would even just go to the park and just lay down in the park and listen to those audiobooks. And sometimes I feel like maybe you just need that reminder. You need that motivation again. And I feel like for me, that was like the first step. All right, to get me back on track after I was crushed. <laughs> um, but that was a step. That's a step that I took. I feel like that's what really helped me. And that was just like, all right, all right, just listen to what they're saying. How can you apply this? Just it's if anything, it's just reminders to yourself, you know, reminders to what you want to do, what you want to accomplish, the fact that you want to accomplish something in life, reminders, and you know, just getting in the mindset of okay, how can you do it? Create your game plan. Um, but I don't know, maybe that's just me, but I feel like that really helps. Some people are really weird about like self-help books type of a thing. Um, but I, you know, I had heard really good reviews about it. You can get it on Amazon if you don't like audio versions. But honestly, if you're so busy, like you're driving to work, you don't have, like that's my time to maybe read a book or something. But if you're driving and you don't have time, get the audio version, make the time, you know. So I kind of like set aside and made time for that. And I feel like that just really like, all right, let's, all right, let's do this. Let's create a game plan. What are we going to do? So that really helped kind of like jumpstart for me um, and keep reminding myself like, all right, you have a goal. We want to accomplish it, and but we want to accomplish it the right way. We don't want to just find any job. We don't want to be in the same situation where you find another career path or another job that you just, honestly, it's not what you want to do. And I never understood that, why people would maybe get so depressed or, you know, maybe leave a job that could potentially make them way more money, you know, and they've already put in so much time into it until I'm in that situation where it's like, for me, my happiness was worth more. So I really wanted to get back to that. I wanted to be happy again. I forgot, you forget what, or yeah, you forget or you really don't understand what happiness is until you don't have it. It's weird. Um, you know, some people have, maybe it was a mini depression. I don't know if it's actually, but it, that was just a weird time and a weird feeling in my life. <laughs> 
Uh, it was weird because I was just like, I felt like I was happy with every other aspect of my life except for my job and the fact that your job is eight hours of your day <laughs> and then minus the hours that you're sleeping and the little amount of time you have after work. That's your whole day. That's pretty much your whole life. So yeah, I feel like that's really going to take a toll on you. So I'm glad, I'm, I don't know, I feel like I'm glad there's just something in me that kind of sparked and was like, this is not okay, bitch. You need to change some shit. <laughs> I feel like just kind of like being able to maybe realize and trying and trying and trying to get myself out of it. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know, like smack yourself in the face, like wake up and you know, <laughs> all right, we need to fix this. And the fact that I was able to kind of do that, it's like, all right, so we got a jump start, we got motivated, and something for me that I felt like I kind of needed to do was create my own challenge. I feel like I just needed to create something, a challenge, and some sort of goal that I can accomplish, something mini. So this is going to be, I feel like this is just me, and I don't know, let me know down in the description, or the, the comments, what is something maybe you've done or I don't know some other ideas like if you're in this that maybe will help you because for me the biggest thing was like all right I'm depressed I need to lose weight <laughs> still do um but more than anything I feel like this is all kind of like a mental challenge of whether you can do it you can't do it you're doubting yourself kind of doubting your abilities um, but for me one thing I thought that would really help me was I was like you know what I'm gonna sign up for a half marathon because if there is a bigger mental challenge, that is running. <laughs> running and half marathons and 5Ks and 8Ks and 10Ks, just running in general and having a goal to reach, that's so mental because a lot of the times you tell yourself, like, oh, I'm so tired, I can't do it, and then maybe you stop, but then you go again. It's like, hey, look, you could, but you just had to put yourself in that, you know, mindset that you could. So I was like, you know what? Let's start training for a half marathon. I need to kind of like train something. I need to set goals. I need to set, I need structure, I need to add structure in my life somehow. Um, and just kind of create a game plan for myself. So that was like creating a game plan for that was kind of like in preparation, creating a game plan for myself. It's weird. Um, but yeah, so basically, and it's pretty like, you know, finding a set schedule that you can follow. I'm using the color pop. Um, and then sticking to that schedule because the biggest thing for me was like starting things especially exercise things <laughs> and you know being good with it for like a week maybe two and that's about it and then we're off a week or two and then we're back on a week or two and then we're off a who else has experienced that so my biggest you know hurdle was at least sticking to it <laughs> um and i feel like for me it was like okay and the schedule was kind of like what was it? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it was three miles, and then Saturday, the first week was three miles, and then the next week, same thing, three miles all week, but then the next Saturday's four miles, and then, you know, the next week, three miles during the week, and then it's five miles, and you kind of keep increasing every Saturday. As you go the weeks, you increase maybe just that Wednesday to like four miles or so. And I feel like for that, for me, that was something to kind of, you know, mark off my list, to kind of keep track of, to kind of keep that mental game for myself. And in the meantime, still kind of applying. Like, that was just getting me pumped. Because if anything, you know, I, I'm competitive. I'm low-key competitive, though. <laughs> I'm the sneaky competitive where I'm just like, I kind of don't care. Wait, I was like, oh, I don't care what you're doing. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's cute. And then, you know, like, oh, hey, bitch, what's up? I'm right here. You know, type of a thing. <laughs> you know, I play, I play cool. Um, but for myself, I'm definitely the most competitive because who is your biggest competitor? Yourself. Who is your biggest enemy? Yourself. Um, so it's really just kind of like, kind of like your biggest enemy is yourself and really just trying to like, kind of fight those mental things you say to yourself and trying to fight the fact that you're saying, I can't, I can't, uh, I won't, it's not going to happen. Just like mentally doing it and just kind of keep running. It's like, yes, you can, bitch, yes, you can. And then you do four miles like, yeah, you know, fight, you know, you know, that's it. Does anybody do that by themselves am I just crazy <laughs> but yeah so running like that is kind of like reaching my physical and like my mental kind of barriers that I was creating for myself you know and in the end you're just kind of creating it for yourself because you can be amazing you can do and I still gotta remind myself of this probably throughout life but I'm telling you <laughs> you know you can do it um no matter what it is I think 
I never thought I could run seven miles, but I ran seven miles some, somehow <laughs> with training. So I ran seven miles and throughout that process, I'm applying for jobs. So I'm pushing myself to physically run, to mentally prep myself for that, to mentally prep myself, to remind myself and push myself to still keep sending on my resume, regardless <laughs> of the little, you know, you suck emails, <laughs> but not even just underqualified, but those things. And finally, I heard back from my current job and they're like, hey, you know, would you like to schedule an interview? Of course. And, you know, just trying to like when you get that letter, you're just like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And then nervous as hell. Um, <laughs> so we schedule the interview and they're like, hey, you know what? Uh, we'll let you know by maybe like tomorrow or the next day whether we can follow you through for another like phone call Skype interview with our, you know, other our marketing person. And I was like, OK, let's do this. <laughs> And just like something prepping yourself for that and while I'm just I remember before I got the call back for like my phone call interview just like I remember I think that they had to run like six miles I was supposed to do it on a Saturday and I totally slacked and it was that Monday I was like we're gonna run six miles and just kind of telling myself when you run like you can run six miles you can earn this job you deserve it because you've worked hard you know telling just telling yourself and trying to bump yourself up and then later you know just getting that email like hey you're moving on to the next process and oh how good that feels and just meeting like your physical hurdles and your mental hurdles and stuff and then one more process because you know why not it's like all right cool we did the phone call skype interview all right one more thing I'm like oh my god just hire me please i'm like oh, oh yeah it's between you and another person i was like oh god it's like can this person is this person better can this person not be better oh god you know and then finally just getting that email getting that just offer and wanting to cry <laughs> because at that point i was like oh my god we've gotten so far with this i've been rejected or something i've really wanted before and if you know just hoping that you know this is it and finally i just feel like your your hard work has kind of paid off and finally getting that just offer has just felt amazing so I don't know, it was weird. I just feel like from that moment on, I woke up the next day for work and I just started feeling great. I started feeling happy again. Like I feel like maybe in general, I was I was definitely starting to be like a grumpy, you know, cranky ass chick at work. And that just totally like, it was a 180 from that day on. And just in general from starting a new job where actually the commute is longer. <laughs> I have to get up earlier. Um, but the fact that i don't know i'm just starting new i'm excited about it just getting like the trainings and going every day i'm getting up does not feel like a problem it's not a struggle i'm not hitting snooze like 20 times i know my boyfriend love that <laughs> i can hit snooze 20 times but i swear to god if he hits snooze just once twice ooh, he don't know <laughs> but i could do it 20 times but not doing it as often because it's like, hey, you know, like I'm ready, I'm pumped, let's, you know, let's kind of get to work. Yeah, maybe it might be a, like a stressful, a longer day or something, but I'm doing something I enjoy. I actually enjoy it. And that just, that just felt right to me. Like, all right, I definitely made a great decision. I feel like it was good for my mental health <laughs> because people talk about mental health, you know, like you, you're like, okay, whatever, you know, you're, you're not coughing, you're not sneezing, you're good. Like what? What does that kind of do to you but it your mind you know like it it will definitely take a toll on you and i feel like since i've kind of made this big transition in my life i feel like myself and maybe even people around me have definitely like just noticed a difference i'm happier i'm chattier it's weird <laughs> i feel like it definitely just puts everything into perspective and it's just definitely just like that peace of mind is like all right, I don't know if this is going to be the correct path. Maybe I'll change later. Who knows? Who knows in life? Um, but for me, I was like, you know what? You're 26. In case you're wondering, I am 26. A lot of people think I'm like 16, 17, 18, which I get. I get. You know what? The good genes because later when I'm like 40s or 50s, I look younger. But yes, 26. I was like, you know what? Now is the time to really try and figure out, you know, what you want to do. And you know what, there isn't even a magic number. There isn't even time. You could be 30, 40, 50 and decide you need to want to do something different and go for it. Um, I feel like for me, <laughs> sometimes I feel like you have to figure out what you don't want to do in order to figure out maybe what you do want to do. So I feel like maybe you have to kind of 
not make mistakes, but try things out and not everything's gonna work out for you. I really wish I was that type of person who is like, all right, I'm gonna be an engineer and these are the steps I had to take. I'm gonna be a teacher and these are the steps. This is the degree, the schooling, you know, and then we're gonna go for the masters and we're gonna be bilingual, you know, certified. I wish, you know, I kinda had that path. I'm just, but I'm learning, you know what? I'm not the only one. There's tons of other people who have maybe been in that position or in that position right now. So I'm not alone, you're not alone. <laughs> we'll figure it out, you know, but so far, like, I definitely feel like I made a great decision for myself and, you know, hopefully we'll just see where this takes us. And I'm definitely, for me, the biggest thing is I'm happy. <laughs> All full circle around. You know, I was definitely, I was, I was happy with like my boyfriend, my family, but the job was just bringing me down. But overall, I can say I, I pretty much, you know, I am, I am happy. I can actually say I'm happy because I feel like maybe like there's a part of me deep down inside that really wasn't happy and I don't know if maybe now it's coming across that like hey like I remember some people were commenting like oh you seem to be getting more comfortable and you know stuff you know with your channel and maybe I'm just a little bit more chattier but I don't know maybe before I just didn't want to be chatty or I just I don't know I just wasn't in the mood to be chatty <laughs> I am chatty I don't shut up sometimes sometimes it's like 12 a.m., 1 p.m., and my mind would just go on and on and on. And my poor boyfriend, I was like, oh, what about this and this and this? And, mm -hmm, yeah, babe. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I don't know what about you. I, I won't shut up sometimes. <laughs> I'm glad maybe because of me being happy and just wanting to share more and just wanting to be more open, maybe it's coming off a little bit more better. But I don't know. I just definitely feel like maybe if I, I'll look back at like my own vi old videos or just look back at things in general. I feel like I am looking back at things in general just being like, that wasn't me. That wasn't fully me, you know, where I could totally be. I feel like if anything, um, days when I really wasn't liking my job, when I was really having maybe like a hard day, I would, turning on the camera would really help, you know, because I was doing something I really, you know, did enjoy. I do love doing tutorials. I do loving reviews. I think reviews is probably my favorite. Lip swatch videos, just being informative, being a helpful resource. That I definitely do like to do, so I feel like that did help, but there's something kind of maybe bringing me down, keeping me from fully just being like me and out there with you guys. So hopefully, you know, we can continue these. If you like these chit chat, get ready with me. We'll call it chit chat cheese most of the time. <laughs> you know, let me know. I can do more of these. I enjoy this. Um, as chatty as I was, sometimes I feel like, what the hell am I going to talk about? Or maybe in general, you know. Uh, you know. Sometimes I'm not totally, I'm not going to tell you everything, okay, okay. Um, but you know, hey, some things that, or most things, like I don't, I, I don't have anything to hide. I don't have anything like sketchy going on, <laughs> rather if you think that, but just, you know, I'm not going to, no, I don't, I don't have drama, I'm sorry. I'm, it's not going to be like, oh my God, let me tell you, like what happened, what, you know, I, I, I'm not the one with drama. I have no drama in my life. I feel like maybe that's why I love watching like um, drama TV. Because <laughs> there's no drama. There's no, my life is pretty chill. People ask me, what's going on with you? I was like, mm, I'm chilling. You know, <laughs> just chilling. I love watching, what is it, um, Housewives, all the Housewives. So favorite, let me know. Put yours in order. Oh, no, I can't even put these in order if I had to like Oh no, that's hard. Put your favorite housewife shows in order. Okay, I'm gonna name no random, no order. Uh, crap. Which ones do I love? So I definitely love Atlanta. I love New Jersey, uh, Beverly Hills, and New York. New York, though, I was watching because I think I had only seen maybe like the first couple seasons. Sorry, I'm looking for my eyebrow pencil right now. I need to put my eyebrows on. Oh, I had my eyebrow pencil in my other place, but I did just buy an LA Girl Shady Slim Brow Pencil in medium brown, but yeah, so Real Housewives of New York, I, or most of these actually I started watching in college, um, but it was just that one year, sophomore year, because I had cable, <laughs> so then after that I didn't really keep up until they're all on Hulu and stuff, but the Housewives of New York, I remember I had seen some, I think I'd seen up to like season two or three, probably up until maybe when Bethany got her own show. So I started rewatching everything on I started rewatching everything on Hulu, um, and then I transitioned to the Bethany for after shows, um, which is good for if you want like girl boss, bad bitch, boss bitch type, you know, motivation. That shows another motivation of mine. I was like, yes, do it, you know, like yeah, I want to be like Bethany. She a boss bitch, but yeah. Um, 
I started watching that and then honestly I skipped through the seasons where she wasn't on the show and then I think up until season like seven or something when she returned because they're like they can hold it down. But yeah, I think, I don't know, I like them, I don't know, they're all pretty good. What are your favorites if you have to rank them? If I had to name my number one, I think my number one's either, I think I would say Atlanta just because every season I feel like Atlanta has always been good. Whereas like uh, New Jersey, I feel like the season was kind of like, mm, was the season I think right before Teresa went to jail where they brought in the twins where they just didn't really offer much. Where I feel like Atlanta, they've always been good about like, because you know sometimes they like transition different girls and see if they work, but then it's like, mm, you're pretty boring, you're not going to be re-signed on. But Atlanta's always either just added people, but they haven't added like, they've kept like a good core group and they just kind of added maybe one or here, here or there. Um, and they've mostly kind of been able to move on. So I think that's the one show that's always been like consistently like every season pretty good, even if they brought like the born bitch in or something <laughs> who didn't really offer much drama to the group. So yeah, every time I'm watching one of those, my boyfriend's like, what are you watching? <laughs> I was like, oh, it's the housewives. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so I like, I like my garbage TV. I really do. I think that's a great way to relax. <laughs> So that's what I do. I watch the super dramatic shows or Desperate Housewives. Desperate Housewives, Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, a lot of those like, <gasps> you know, Jane the Virgin. I, if you haven't seen Jane the Virgin, I keep telling my sister she should. It's kind of like a novella, but like making fun of novellas. So you know you're making fun of novellas, but it's still like, oh my God, are those meal? You know, what's gonna happen? <gasps> you know, if you haven't watched Jane the Virgin, you should. Oh, I've cried. Um, I also cried. <laughs> Don't watch Grey's Anatomy um, during your period. Don't watch Grey's Anatomy. Freaking Shonda Rhimes. Oh my god. She knows. She knows how to just... Ugh. If you haven't watched Grey's Anatomy ever, exit out these next couple seconds. Just stop. I'm going to start right now about the one part where I really cried. Okay. So who cried during the part where McDreamy died? Oh my god. I didn't even think I cared about McDreamy that much. Honestly, I, I was kind of annoyed by Derek and um, <laughs> Meredith, but I was on my period when he died. Oh, I cried so hard. I was like, <gasps> like, I was crying. I was bawling. I was like, oh my god, what is happening to me right now? And then I cried the next day on the next episode. I was like, oh my god, stop. Like, my head hurts so much from crying because I was so dehydrated. <laughs> I, didn't, I was like, what? What is going on right now? Um, but anyway, so yeah. So if you're back. <laughs> so yeah, basically I have no drama in my life. I do like to find my drama within other sources like television. Let me know if there's a very dramatic show that you like that you think I should check out because I've been basically just kind of doing reruns now. One, I do watch other like non-garbage TV, I swear. <laughs> I, I finished watching Narcos, but especially Narcos and then with the bosses bitch type of topics, I kind of do want to check out um, La Reina del Sur. If you've seen it, let me know. I know they have Queen of the South in English, but I don't know. I feel like maybe La Reina del Sur might be a little bit better. I don't know. If you've seen either one, let me know, compare, because I definitely want, I think that's definitely on my next list. But you know, female empowerment, come on. <laughs> I definitely want to check those out. I'm gonna use the Milani Prep Set and Glow. And I tried to do my eyebrows, but geez, I haven't done my eyebrows since uh, my last job. My last day was August 16th. It's September 12th. Yeah. Um, I just one haven't had time. I do have an eyebrow place by my house, but like it's not like on my route to work home really so I haven't really like in my weekends I've said it, they've been booked so ugh, just the having to find a brand new like brow lady brow place trust somebody else with your brows I'm using the makeup revolution HD contour I'm using this one I use this one to set underneath my eyes but yeah ugh. so I gotta find one I prefer um, threading over waxing just because the last couple times or probably every time when I've waxed I just leave them way too thin Whereas um, eyebrow threading is definitely way more precise. Uh, plus for me, I am my father's daughter. So my eyebrows grow back so quick. So the fact that you're pulling them from the root with like threading, it you know, they last a little bit longer. But I feel like in general, 
I can get away maybe with three weeks. Usually it's like I try to go every two weeks to stay fresh. Um, but I feel like I can maybe go three weeks or four weeks if I kind of like just maintain like plucking them like every other night or every couple nights whenever you see like a little hair, you know, coming out and then maybe kind of trimming them or whatever. Uh, but I used to be able to do that in college when I had the time, you know, ain't nobody got time for that anymore. So I was like, I'm going to try to find time or I'm just going to be looking a little bit bushy, which is kind of the situation. So I was like, oh, should I just give in and find somewhere where they wax? But I really don't want to end up with thin brows, but that's where the miracle of um, eyebrow pencils come in. <laughs> but then for those days, I don't want to wear eyebrow pencils. So I added lashes and my wing liner. I use one of my favorites, NYX Matte Liquid Liner. And honestly, I can't talk and do my <laughs> wing liner. Um, and lashes get a little bit difficult too. But I do want to do, if you guys are interested, how to do a wing liner, how to apply false lashes. Because I definitely, I feel like for me, because I've definitely had experience, I don't mind whether it's like the paint tip, the felt tip, or even with a brush. Everybody's got their different preferences. But if you guys are interested in those videos, let me know because I think probably a girl that's going to record them now. <laughs> but let me know if you guys are interested in those videos. And the blush I'm going to use is the Bombs Hot Mama blush. That's so a really nice, like, corally type of blush, similar to like a NARS orgasm, maybe a little bit deeper. Um, but as actually while I was applying my lashes and liner, Oh, lashes are 615 by Salon Perfect. I was watching, I was catching up on my housewives, which is also why sometimes I do want to do chit chat, get ready with me, or like, you know, chat as I do my makeup or like talk through makeup tutorials, but I like to watch um, some Hulu or Netflix or something to catch up on one of my shows while I'm doing my makeup, so can't really have that on in the background while I do my makeup. But, you know, I mean, as I get chattier and have things, it actually goes by quick too, so. And honestly, with this blush, like, it's got, like, a really nice sheen to it. So if you don't like wearing, like, highlight, like, you can just wear this on its own. But, you know, I gotta wear some highlight. So, actually, we're gonna use my, because my highlight brush is so far, I'm actually just gonna use the brush that I used to set underneath my eyes. These are the ColourPop brushes. And I'm gonna use the Desi and Katie Fuego highlighter. And with this brush, if you want to kind of like intensify it instead of just like a fan brush, you can definitely, look at that, use that to sweep on the cheeks. Because I mean, I don't think I'll ever, for a highlight, let me know if you've gone through a whole highlight. I don't think I've ever gone through a whole highlight because one, I have so many. I get more drugstore ones because there's definitely a bunch of high-end ones that I really, really want, but you know, budget-wise, just hard for me to want to pull the trigger on those because I'm like, oh, $38 for a highlight. I almost did. So I did and I didn't. <laughs> I gave in. I, gave, I was like, do I need it? I don't know. Fenty Beauty. I gave in and I bought the foundation and I almost bought the highlights. Uh, but I was like, oh, do I need it right now? I was like, okay, budget wise, just get the foundation for a review and test out because you know, and maybe I'll go and swatch in stores the highlights. I forgot which one I was going to get, but uh, I almost got it. And I can't stop with this one. But I was like, you just bought the Desi Katie highlight. So, because um, I really, I want to save my money. I want to wait for the drugstore, like, fall, like, November, December, January releases. So I was like, I really got to save my money for that to do those reviews. Um, so I was like, all right, just the foundation. I, honestly, I don't. I don't know why. I've just been so busy at work. You know, I kind of saw, I was like, oh, it's coming up. Should I? I don't know. But I've been too busy to even think about picking up any new products to review. Like, I have to, like, remind myself. Whereas before, it's like, I'm at Walgreens. You know, like, what do you got? What do you got? Um, so, but my sister actually texted me. My sister doesn't give a crap about makeup. Nothing. Like, I teach her about makeup. I get her stuff. And she's kind of interested sometimes. You know, but she's got other things. So, for her to be like what's the Rihanna, you know, foundation like? I was like, what? You want it? She's like, that just tells me, like, I was like, all right, I think I need it. I think I need, I need to know. I need to tell my sister. I need to tell my peoples. Um, but more than anything, because I wish they would come out with more, like, normal to dry skin foundation. I feel like there definitely are some out there. There's a bunch I've reviewed. I've listed my favorite high-end and drugstore, and there's still more to try out. Um, 
but I feel like in general like a lot of foundations come out that are like matte or you know who knows what so sometimes I don't gravitate towards wanting to try them out but this one I was like you know what let's check it out because maybe it's not a full on matte maybe it's not super you know duper you know dehydrating on my dry skin so to give you a dry skin perspective hopefully we can get that soon I'm going to be going to New York this weekend so hopefully when I get back um, the package will arrive because Sephora is usually pretty quick about their delivery so I'm excited for my lipstick, I'm going to be using the Wet n Wild. This is their Liquid Katsu. I did lip swatches, I think, on probably the entire collection from Wet n Wild. So I'll link that video down below in case you guys are interested. And I'm trying to think, I'm looking at other stuff that I've used today. Uh, I'll link any reviews and demos I've done. ColourPop I've definitely done on their concealer and their brushes. And as well as the Makeup Forever, my highlight and contour in case you guys are interested to check those out. So that is the completed look. It's actually like 10 o'clock at night right now. So this might end up just being, you know, a look I put together for the picture for the gram, which I feel like I need to get more like makeup pictures up anyway. But we did, you know, I'll edit this video. I wonder how long it's going to be. I hope it's not too long. But hey, I told you, I could be chatty. So there you go. <laughs> Uh, I hope you guys do enjoy these chit chat kind of get ready with me is maybe like life updates and stuff Just kind of what's going on a little bit in my life. I like watching these type of videos I hope you guys do as well. It might just be me rambling talking on my ass just random stuff I don't think it'll ever be anything like ooh super dramatic type of a thing But let me know like this video. Let me know in the comments down below You know what anything like feel free go for it. let's start a conversation <laughs> With anything we kind of like mentioned here in general. I feel like maybe it was just Kind of sharing like what was going on with me. I know there's probably other people, you know, have gone through the same thing or going through the same thing. But just in general, just like, you know, keep your head up, keep going, you know, find what works for you to kind of push yourself to kind of keep going. It's difficult whether it's like, you know, finding a new job or just something in your life. You know, if you're unhappy, I feel like try to pinpoint that unhappiness. You know, what is it really? Because until you really change that one thing, you kind of figure out what it is. Like, I feel like you're kind of just going to be stuck, you know? So try to do what works for you. And hopefully, you know, maybe it was somewhat helpful. Um, or in general, you just enjoyed the video and just random stuff I was talking about. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to check the description bar for just little items that I use. I know I didn't mention all of them. But sometimes I think it's just fun to like wear makeup, especially when I'm new job. I actually haven't been wearing makeup. Nobody, none of the chicks wear makeup. So I'm like, whatever, let my skin breathe. But <laughs> I just love playing with makeup. So this is my opportunity to just kind of like pile it on, add some. I wasn't even going to add lashes today, but I was going to take a picture for Instagram. So, but I was like, yeah, do mascara. Maybe another day we'll just do mascara or something. But thank you guys. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.